Today we are slicing through a myth so thin that you could read nonsense right through it. I didn't have any foreskins protecting my autism on my 2025 bingo card either. There's two studies that show children who are circumcised early have double the rate of autism. Says everybody's favourite Sith Lord, RFK Jr. Hey friends, I'm Mike, a late identified autistic adult, and today is another bad science debunking video. I'm going to fill out the claims that circumcision is linked to autism. I'm going to try not to cut myself again, but these claims, they practically just fall apart on their own. By now, everyone knows RFK Jr. made these claims in a White House televised television conference because he believes that Tylenol, which is a brand name for acetaminophen or paracetamol, causes autism, which it doesn't. And he believes that because of the routine circumcision of infants in some places like the US, and Tylenol is a potential painkiller, it's the Tylenol and not the circumcision that's causing autism. Neither Tylenol nor circumcision cause autism, by the way, and we're gonna get into it. But people hear science says and autism in the same paragraph and panic inevitably ensues because in general, and I am speaking very widely here, most people have much less of a clue about autism than they do about finding their way out of a proverbial paper bag with a compass, a flashlight, and a room full of autistics and ADHDers telling them the way out of the bag. RFK Jr. has, to his credit, actually cited some of his autism, circumcision, and Tylenol sources on this one, and I've read them. And <laughs> they certainly don't show what he thinks that they do. One of them isn't even about Tylenol, but let's get into it. What is autism? Sorry, I'm repeating myself for everyone in the back right now, but autism is a neurotype. Autism is not a mental illness. Autism is not a disease, and there is not an epidemic. Autism does not have symptoms. It has features, it has characteristics, and it has traits. Autism is a disability, and no matter where you go for an autism assessment, Disability is still one of the mandatory factors for an autism diagnosis. Self-identification is valid, and I am proud to say that the autism community is generally very accepting and non-judgmental judgmental, and non-judgmental towards those who self-identify as autistic for what can be very many reasons, including barriers to diagnosis and support, not having access to diagnosticians, or the thousands of dollars it costs for an assessment. Autistic people, like all disabled people, need support and understanding. You know, none of this is this positive, but all of it is stuff that we should be paying attention to. Not this. But on the other hand, when high profile people push single cause stories for autism, it just fuels more stigma, more bullying, it distracts from support, and lately it's been seeding government statements that freak out pregnant people and parents. In my September predictions video, I said, we'd get a splashy, unscientific, we found the cause moment, which we did. <laughs> Therefore, we'd need to answer it calmly and with receipts, which we did. And last month, I did exactly that and covered the press release literally the day that it happened, and there are links to that in the video description below. I did think, though, that these bizarre and ungracefully made claims would be so embarrassing that RFK Jr. and Trump would walk them back rather than push forward, continuing down a road to nowhere, Something like a flat earther trying to find the planet's edge and then realizing that they were mistaken. It's no big drama. Everyone goes home and just has a cup of tea. The end. Moving on. But RFK Jr. actually pointed to two new studies that he claims show early circumcision doubles autism rates and that Tylenol is, in his words, highly likely the reason. This paper literally declares that everything we know about autism is a myth and that the body of evidence indicates that autism is a hallmark of acetaminophen exposure during neurodevelopment, despite the fact that the body of evidence, and there is a lot of it, says the opposite. Meanwhile, Trump is reiterating that pregnant women don't take the Tylenol, don't give it to the baby when the baby is born. The first study, a Danish study in 2015 by Frisch and Simonsen, People keep calling this one the Denmark study, which is like really unhelpful because Denmark is a country that has had a lot of studies. <laughs> and this particular 2015 paper used the National Registry of Boys born between 1994 and 2003 and reported that those circumcised in early childhood had a higher instantaneous rate of receiving an autism diagnosis before age 10. They gave it a hazard ratio or HR of 1.46 
for infantile autism, diagnosed before age five, the reported HR was about 2.06. Quick pause to explain, a hazard ratio compares rates over time, not final odds. So HR 1.46 does not mean 46% higher chance by age 10. It means that the diagnosis rate at any given moment was estimated to be 46% higher in the circumcised group during follow-up, not that their cumulative probability jumped by 46% overall. The report also gives us this amusing nugget. It says, hazard ratios, HRs, with 95% confidence intervals associated with foreskin status were obtained using Cox proportional hazards regression analyses. <laughs> what this means is that they coded circumcision as a yes-no variable, and they put that into a time to diagnosis model. That's the Cox model. And they received a number at the end of it, which says how fast kids were diagnosed, not how certain they were to be diagnosed. Now, if you want Tylenol answers, you actually have to measure Tylenol, but this model didn't. The premise of the paper is that autism is somehow caused via distress, pain, and trauma, and that circumcision, being an early intervention that causes distress and pain, might be then a factor that somehow switches autism on in the brain like a light switch. The issue is that there is no evidence whatsoever that distress, pain, and trauma cause autism. It is a lifelong neurodevelopmental condition. There's not even a plausible mechanistic connection between one, pain <laughs> causing the other, Autism. Their other methods were also really strange. They might have looked at nearly 350,000 boys' records in total, but the only signal that appears is in boys aged under five and not older children. And the total number of autism cases recorded, 57. That's literally a drop in the ocean or about the same as my cat's 3 a.m. zoomies causing an actual earthquake. A tiny sample, no mechanism linking, cats to earthquakes, and against all alternative plausible explanations, the entire field of geology and all the evidence to the contrary. That's how this reads. <sighs> how to stop autism. If they really want to just stop autism, I do actually have a few ideas for them. Maybe they could work on slicing barriers, improving access to healthcare, making it free at the point of need. Maybe they could mandate flexible working, make the quieter third spaces. Add autism training to the medical school syllabuses. I was surprised that medical school syllabuses don't actually have autism training at all. How about training on autism for those doctors who graduate medical school and go on to train as psychiatrists? They get no specific or mandatory autism training, and they should. How about enforcing consent and preventing compliance-based ABA practices with perhaps a governmentally registered inspection body? A cafe will get independent health inspections so you don't get sick, but someone working on modifying your child's behavior for 40 hours a week does not. I could go on and on and on, and maybe I will at some point. <laughs> Wild ideas, right? Let's look at the second study. That is an ecological paper from 2013 by Bauer and Kriebel, and it looked at national circumcision rates as a proxy for acetaminophen use. Now, this was on the assumption that every circumcised infant is given Tylenol, acetaminophen, paracetamol, at the time, and that's a pretty big assumption that we'll touch on later. The authors themselves said that it was simply a hypothesis generating exercise. It's a proxy of a proxy. They were just chucking it out there. They're using a proxy of a proxy. But what they found though, using that proxy of a proxy, was that there was a correlation between prenatal acetaminophen use and autism. And they saw similar correlations between circumcision rates and autism in boys. They'd probably have seen similar correlation rates between the decreasing number of pirates and the increasing um, rate of autism diagnoses. I mean, these results are just purely observational. They are not linked. They can't say that one causes the other. This was an ecological paper. That means that the study looks at population level data, comparing countries or regions rather than tracking individual children and their actual acetaminophen exposure. That's what I mean by a proxy of a proxy. The problem is, is that when you only have group averages, you can't know whether the individual boys who developed autism in their, in their minds uh, were the same ones who actually received Tylenol after circumcision. Maybe circumcised boys in one country got ibuprofen instead. Maybe they got nothing at all. Maybe those families who chose circumcision differed in a hundred other ways. Socioeconomic status, healthcare access, genetic background, these things correlate with autism diagnosis rates. 
Political problems. Despite the overwhelming evidence that Tylenol, acetaminophen and paracetamol is the safest pain reliever and fever reducer when used correctly of course, and not taking fever reducers can be worse than not taking them. Oh, and not taking fever reducers can be worse than taking them. When this hits the political stage and you have the most powerful men rewriting the underpinnings of the scientific enterprise and millions of people who simply do not have the critical tools to evaluate claims in their, in their lives at all, the real world consequences can be very severe. Families may withhold safe pain relief from feverish infants. Pregnant people may avoid necessary medication. Autistic people face renewed stigma as the target of prevention rhetoric rather than support and accommodation. The political amplification of weak science just doesn't distort understanding. It actively harms the people that it claims to protect, stacking the papers. If you stack a small age-restricted signal, that's the Denmark 2015 study, and you stack that on top of a proxy-based ecological paper from 2013, the proxy of a proxy, you get, oh, interesting, somebody should test that properly. You get a, a jacking off fallacy, just asking questions. Oh. But you do not get policy or cabinet level certainty and broadcasting that this is the likely cause that is just scientifically indefensible. But wait, there's more. In a follow-up post on X, RFK Jr. said that the media misrepresented him, and he linked a new source, the Patel preprint from August 2025, and claimed that it validates that circumcision's autism signal is best explained by Tylenol, citing the Danish study as the most compelling standalone evidence and elevating an oxidative stress mechanism. The preprint itself states that the body of evidence indicates that autism is a hallmark of acetaminophen exposure, and it labels the mainstream multifactorial model of autism a myth. Biostatistician Professor Jeffrey S. Morris responded on X in a detailed critique, those are the screenshots that you're seeing now, saying that this wasn't a neutral systematic review, but a narrative review with a pre-committed lens. It presumes that acetaminophen as the primary driver via oxidative stress, and then score studies, whether they're helpful, futile, or harmful, largely based on agreement with that hypothesis, rather than transparent quality criteria. Where have we seen that type of scoring before? Oh yes, previous video description. He flags the preprint's framing as explicitly biased and mechanistically thin, exactly the opposite of gold standard evidence that one would need for any sort of sweeping big claims. <sighs> If your systematic review starts by calling multifactorial autism a myth, then that's like starting a cooking show by declaring that bread is a hallucination. You can still make toast, but something is going to be a bit off. Scientific American highlighted that Kennedy leaned on truly appalling evidence, and that the Danish study we talked about earlier lacked Tylenol data and causal mechanism. PBS NewsHour laid out why equating circumcision to Tylenol to autism is unsound, and why the evidence is insufficient. And if neuroperversity man were here, he would say, If evidence were erectile tissue, this briefing would flop harder than a deflated balloon animal. And that preprint calls multifactorial autism a myth? That's like yelling flat earth while humping a globe. But he's not here, so we don't have to worry about him. The Israel contradiction and other reality tricks. If circumcision were a major driver of autism, countries with near-universal infant circumcision should have sky-high autism rates. But Israel, where ritual circumcision is the norm, reports lower autism prevalence estimates than the US does. This doesn't prove anything by itself, by the way, and I'm not proposing it as evidence for any particular point, except to say that it contradicts the very, very simple narrative of circumcision equals autism. Bonus reality check, a peer-reviewed critique titled Circumcision Pain Unlikely to Cause Autism took aim at overinterpreting pain autism links and underscored confounding and tiny event counts. The authors specifically note the Danish study's limitations and the small number of circumcised and to ASD cases, you know, 57. When you float that early circumcision leads to autism, you are intentionally or not, implicating religious communities where infant circumcision is a ritual norm, and that's why the claim drew accusations of anti-Semitism and why responsible coverage pointed out the cultural harm of such insinuations. Men's Health and Times of Israel tackled this. What the White House and FDA messaging did and didn't establish. The current administration posted an article which it rather perversely titled, FACT. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Evidence suggests link between acetaminophen, autism. The methodological issues in these papers have more red flags than Epstein's flight logs. And just like those documents, the closer you look, the more questions pile up about what's really being covered up versus what's actually there. And I do try to be apolitical, mostly because autism is not politics. It's not a left-wing contagion. It's not a right-wing, I don't know, disease or whatever. It's not even particularly American. And autism is, <laughs> as a, and autism as a subject of study does actually deserve gold standard science. Autistic people and their families do need support. So talking about gold standard science, family-based designs like the 2024 Sweden JAMA sibling study of 2.5 million kids, which properly controlled for hidden confounding and familiar variables and so on. And they also don't approach the subject with a predetermined motivation. And they don't support a causal Tylenol autism link. And we broke this down in my earlier Tylenol video. Recent reviews acknowledge associations in some observational data, usually where someone has a bias and they've got something they're out to prove, right? But also emphasize this bias and confounding by indicators. And when stronger designs are used, the signal that they find often fades away to nothingness. A hot take of mine this now, but I'm beginning to believe that some of those people publishing papers are not intending on doing good science. It needs to be poor. It needs to be dirt quality, not gold standard, because once they introduce controls and neutralizing of those hidden confounders and limitations, their headlines just slip away, never to be seen. A bit like those Epstein papers. Even the Patel preprint, beyond its framing issues, doesn't supply new human mechanistic data that would resolve causation. It leans heavily on just narrative, and animal models while declaring, it just, just simply just declaring multifactorial model a myth. Science isn't just about declaring things, therefore they're true. Science isn't about just simply just declaring by fiat. Just declaring. This has been revealed to me in a dream <laughs> that you should subscribe to this channel. <laughs> like the video and share it. <laughs> what actually causes autism? Autism is a polygenic and multifactorial neurodevelopmental condition. Lots and lots of genes of small effect plus complex developmental biology. It runs in families. In other words, predominantly autistic traits, autistic characteristics and autistic features are highly and predominantly heritable. Big teams are trying to map out different subtypes and trajectories and all of this. In fact, if the Denmark paper I mentioned earlier, which is riddled with methodological, which is just riddled with methodological flaws, actually controlled for those problems, I think it's quite likely that they've ended up adding to the body of knowledge that there is no link between vaccinations and autism. There is no link between Tylenol and autism. And autism is a neurodevelopmental condition, a lifelong condition. And that I don't think is what they want to find. Hmm, suspicious. If you'd like more bad science, there is a link to the bad science playlist in the description below, which is worth a look, especially over the last year, because there's been quite a lot of it. The video on screen now is the one that you should see next, which isn't quite bad science, but it's about four new autism subtypes and doesn't mean what large YouTubers and media outlets have been claiming that it does. My last exclusive video on Patreon was a detailed response to Hank Green's own Tylenol video. So if you're supporting my channel on Patreon, do take a watch of that. And if not, give the link a click because there are loads of benefits. There's even some free stuff on my Patreon. We've got extra videos, my notes, my mind maps, and the lovely NeuroFirming 24-7 Scratching Post Discord community and weekly live streams both on YouTube and in the Discord after party. So there's a lot going on on this channel. Love you to be part of it. Take care now and I'll see you later. Bye.